I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous to make this video. My journey with celiac disease has honestly just been so personal and it's been a span of 12 years since I've been diagnosed. I just feel like there's so much that I wanna share with you guys. I'm confining this story to a YouTube video and I know I'm gonna forget stuff, but I just wanna go for it because I feel like my younger self would have loved seeing this type of video and I would have found a lot of comfort in it. So if you're younger, if you're older than me, whatever stage of life you're in, I hope that this video is just so somewhat informative or helpful or at least just provide some sort of comfort and solace for whatever place you are at with your celiac disease and please comment down below where you are in your celiac journey and we can all support each other and have a online community so if you're new here hi i'm lucia i'm 23 i live in chicago and i have celiac disease obviously that's the point of this video and i was diagnosed about 12 years ago when i was 11 which is crazy to say that it's been 12 years i've now had celiac for longer than i haven't had celiac well i mean i guess i've had it my whole life but i've been aware of it and i just want to say before i get into all of the details of my specific journey that i am not a doctor i'm really just speaking to my own personal experience here i know this disease can affect everyone in a different way everyone's body is different even if we do have the same autoimmune disorder and if you aren't diagnosed with celiac disease yet please 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 consult your doctor before changing any lifestyle habits or diets this video is not about trying to self-diagnose yourself with celiac disease this is it's just about my personal journey and experience so i'm not giving any sort of advice or tips and I'm, I'm really just sharing my story so please take everything i say with a grain of salt i also just want to say real quick that i know i'm super privileged to even have been diagnosed with celiac disease especially so early at 11. i know so many people go years and years and years without ever even figuring it out and overall i know i'm super grateful and blessed for the lifestyle i have and the health level that i have and i'm going to be talking about different struggles that i've had with celiac disease just because those are things that have affected me in my life and I completely understand that while celiac disease is a part of my identity it really hasn't changed my life that much honestly I feel like if anything it's changed my life for the better definitely not for the worst so yeah I know I'm super lucky that this is really the main health issue I've ever had to deal with in my life so I just want to recognize that while still making space that this was a challenge it's okay to have struggles with experiences when in the grand scheme of the world and in comparison to other things it's really not that bad so this is my own personal journey with celiac disease please don't compare it to your own journey or change any of your habits just because what i do also i recognize that there are way more serious health conditions out there i'm not trying to paint myself as a victim or say that i've just had the worst time ever because that's certainly not true i'm just trying to share my experience so with that being said in this video i'm going to talk about my diagnosis my journey Journey leading up to celiac disease. I'm going to talk about my adjustment to becoming gluten-free in the various stages of my life, so middle school, high school, college, because honestly they all three were very different for me. And then I'm also going to talk about my experience now as an adult, 23 in Chicago. And I also just want to give a quick Google definition of what celiac disease is if you're not 100% sure. Literally reading this off Google. It is an autoimmune reaction to eating gluten, which is a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye, and over time it can create inflammation that damages is the small intestines lining leading to medical complications and malabsorption and the mainstay treatment is a strict gluten-free diet that can help manage symptoms and promote intestinal healing so I was diagnosed with celiac disease, which we now all know the definition of, at 11 years old. And the reason I was even going to a doctor in the first place to figure out if something was wrong with me was that I had a wide range of symptoms as a child growing up that honestly, when I was growing up, I didn't even realize that they were symptoms because this was just all I'd ever known, which I think is really interesting. So it was really my parents that were noticing that these symptoms were happening to me. I think ever since I was a baby, I would always break out in rashes. My tummy would hurt after eating. I was always super bloated. I remember I thought I hated pizza but really like I love pizza now it was just that eating pizza made me feel sick so I didn't like eating it and oddly enough the two flavors of Doritos like the chips the cool ranch flavor is gluten-free but the nacho cheese flavor isn't gluten-free and when I was a kid I loved the cool ranch flavor but I could not stand the nacho cheese flavor and I think it was my body like subliminally sending me messages <laughs> But the biggest symptom that I had was stunted growth. So I was just consistently in every grade in school way shorter than my classmates. And I think this really stood out to us because I already have short jeans. My mom is 5'2 and my dad is 5'7. So the combination of me having short jeans and also having celiac disease just led to me being way shorter than I probably should have been. So around the time when I was nine, my parents started taking me to see some specialists to try to figure out what was going on. I remember I would get bone scans, different blood tests. And I also remember once I started middle school, 
school, I used to get sick all the time. I would always be calling home and, you know, having stomach issues. And I remember it got to a point where my mom thought I was faking it, but really I was just, my body was breaking down from eating so much gluten and not knowing that it was bad for me. So that really expedited the testing. And eventually I took this blood test that came back positive for celiac disease. But in order to confirm 100% since it's a genetic condition, I had to get a biopsy, which is essentially a procedure where they put you under and they basically use a scope to take a tissue out of your body somewhere down there. Again, not a doctor. <laughs> and they test that tissue to confirm whether or not you have celiac disease for sure. I honestly don't even really remember that much of the procedure. I was 11. I just remember going there, putting on the hospital gown. And then I remember falling asleep and waking up and having a bit of a sore throat because the tube was down my throat. But I don't remember being nervous at all. I was honestly really chill. I'm sure I got to get a day off of school and I was like, all right, cool. I get to have a hospital bracelet. Like really at 11 years old, I was so unbothered by it. But I'm sure if I did something like that now, I would be more nervous, which honestly good for me. I'm glad that I wasn't nervous when I was doing that. And then soon after the results came back and obviously it ended up being 100% positive for celiac. That's when I officially started being gluten-free. I honestly feel like at the time I was pretty numb to it. I just remember one night we were having dinner. We were supposed to have ravioli. It was my favorite food. I was so excited. And then I remember my mom was just like, oh yeah, sorry. Like you can't have ravioli tonight. And I was like, why? And she was like, oh, we just didn't have enough. Like she was just making up some excuse. So I remember I ended up having scrambled eggs and honestly, like I ended up not Really caring that much i thought it was like a little bit weird and then i remember my parents took me into their room and they were like so you have to start going on this diet for your health like that that's what the test came back like it's called celiac this is what you have to do and i just remember being like oh like for the next week <laughs> and they were like no for the rest of your life and i was like oh interesting honestly i remember not even thinking it was that big of a deal i feel like i was pretty numb to it i was just like oh, okay i didn't cook my own food so honestly it didn't even really affect me that much like i don't even think i cried or anything i was just like oh Okay. <laughs> I think I was just more confused than anything, honestly. So I didn't even really think it was that big of a deal. I think the thing that I hated more than anything was the fact that it could draw attention to myself. So I literally didn't tell any of my friends at school about it because, you know, I was in middle school. I just wanted to fit in. I thought it was weird. I just, I didn't want to tell anyone. So I didn't tell any of my friends that I had celiac. I remember I would go to sleepovers and have waffles. My mom definitely told their mom that I was gluten-free, but at the time in 2011, it wasn't something that a lot of people knew about. Out. So if the mom was like, oh, can you have this? I'd be like, yeah, because I just I didn't want to make a big deal about it I remember always feeling so embarrassed when I would go out to eat with my family And my parents had to make a big deal about asking the ingredients and the nacho cheese and all this stuff And I just remember I just remember hating it like I was I was a theater kid I was always performing like I loved being the center of attention sometimes But when it came to my diet and being gluten-free, I was like, please make this go away like i i hated every second of it and also keep in mind i grew up in shreveport louisiana so maybe in manhattan in 2011 this would have been a less bigger deal but back in 2011 in shreveport louisiana which is not a major city hardly anyone was really educated about what gluten even was and so when i was 11 and i had this quote-unquote weird disease that no one else knew about and i didn't know anyone else that had it not even any sort of celebrity or internet person or anyone i was like i don't want to tell anyone about this this is embarrassing and looking back i I mean, obviously hindsight's 2020, but there's nothing embarrassing about it at all. But that was my mindset as an 11 year old. But then when I got a bit older, when I was 14, started high school, I, you know, I grew out of the stage of like just wanting to fit in all the time. And I had celiac for three years. So I was used to explaining it to people. It didn't bother me as much. And honestly, it, it really wasn't a big deal for me in high school. I told all my friends about it. It wasn't a big deal. I brought my own lunch to school. There were less, you know, kid-esque birthday parties where there'd be big cake they'd bring to school and I would feel left out not eating it. In high school, it's a little bit more normal to pass on the cake because you're not a 10 year old obsessed with cake anymore. I didn't feel left out. I didn't feel embarrassed. I didn't feel singled out. I didn't feel like celiac disease was weird anymore. I just, I was a lot more comfortable with it. And I also feel like at that age, I started to gain a little bit more perspective into celiac disease and how lucky I was to even be diagnosed and know about it and also have the financial stability, or I guess, I mean, it wasn't me. I was, it was my parents, like my parents having the financial standing to be able to support me because then I started realizing that gluten-free products are more expensive. I started noticing that when I order gluten-free bread, when I'm out at a restaurant, they charge me 
three dollars more. On the rare case that a street court restaurant would have gluten-free bread. I started to notice that the bread was more expensive. Like I just started to notice things because I mean that's just what you do when you're in high school. And I actually ended up starting my own community service project where I would collect different gluten-free foods. I would accept donations and then I would put them in little care packages and take them to the hospital and they would give them out to celiac patients that were less financially fortunate. So I feel like around that age 15, 16, when I started doing that, I became a lot more aware of my privilege and just understood more what celiac was and became a lot more comfortable with it. And then 2017, I graduate from high school and we head over to college. College, I would say, was probably the hardest time of my life so far to have celiac disease. I mean, for a lot of people, the college transition is already hard enough. You're on your own for the first time. There's so many new experiences that are happening. I moved from Shreveport, Louisiana to Chicago. Well, really Evanston. I went to Northwestern, which is just right outside Chicago. It was hard for me to be gluten-free in college, not gonna lie. I think for a number of reasons. The first one being the first year at Northwestern, you're required to go on the school's unlimited food plan, which is basically eating at the cafeteria 24-7, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And they definitely had gluten-free options. There is never not an option that was gluten-free, but often it was the same thing every single day. Like, I have never had so much grilled chicken in my life. I think I literally turned into a piece of grilled chicken. <laughs> And there were times where I'd just be so tired of eating the grilled chicken and I cannot eat this again. Like it was just, there were no options. I was, I really was not eating well, not gonna lie. Some days I would just end up having some cereal for dinner because I was like, I cannot eat grilled chicken one more time. So that was definitely hard. And it was one of those things that when I was college shopping, I didn't really want to think too much about celiac disease because I was like, I don't want this to control my life. Like it has, I'll be fine wherever I go. Like I didn't really think about finding a spot that had good gluten-free options. And I mean, honestly, every college is gonna sell to you that they will offer options for every dietary restriction. I do remember those sophomore year when I was living in my sorority house, we had a chef and it was so much easier. They would basically just make me a separate gluten-free plate. They had gluten-free bread all the time. Like it was a much more pleasant experience. And then eventually when I lived off campus in my own apartment, it was obviously a weird transition trying to learn to cook for myself, but I was at least in control of what I was eating and wasn't, you know, having to eat grilled chicken every day. It all comes back to the grilled chicken. So yeah, that was the first reason I feel like being gluten-free in college was hard just because the lack of options. And the second reason I feel like being gluten-free in college is difficult is alcohol. I mean, it's no secret. Alcohol is a huge part of the American college culture for better or for worse. And at the time, I'm 18, I didn't really drink in high school, I was really excited about it. And I feel like everyone can remember the feeling when you're 18, going to your first college party, like you just want to, you know, be a part of the culture. Looking back, I'm like, why was I so excited about going to a basement and having vodka? Like that doesn't sound fun, but you know, at the time, hindsight's 2020. And to be honest, I was just not educated on what alcohol was gluten-free. I know I could have Googled it. Hindsight's 2020, again. My knowledge was that beer was gluten-free, but I thought everything else was totally fine. I didn't realize that there was, you know, certain whiskeys that weren't gluten-free and all of that stuff. And I remember even accidentally having beer one time at a house party because they were doing like flip cup or something. There were beer in the cups and I just didn't even think about it. So there was a huge learning curve for me with alcohol. Also keep in mind, I started college in 2017. So this was before the seltzer craze with White Claws, High Noons and all of that. So I imagine starting school now, everyone just has white claws all the time and it's not a big deal. And flash forward to now, I mean, it doesn't even seem that hard. Like I'm super educated on alcohol. I know it's gluten-free. I know it's not gluten-free. I know what to ask a bartender if I'm out at a restaurant and I don't even really drink that much anymore. I'm, I'm on dry January now. So everyone has their own journey with alcohol, but whenever you start drinking, if you're gluten-free, it kind of just adds another layer to it. So if you're watching this, I just feel like I have to say this and you're about to start college or you're about to start drinking or you're a parent who has a kid that's about to start college or you have might want to start drinking soon. I would just tell my younger self to be more thoughtful and try to educate myself. And if you're someone's parent, I know it's probably taboo to talk with your kid about alcohol, but I just feel like if you talk about it, one, it takes away the allure that drinking alcohol is so taboo and like rebellious and stuff. And two, obviously you can't control what they do, but you'll feel better about yourself if you know that you kind of researched and looked into this and like looked into alcohol ingredients and told them what's gluten-free and what's not so they can do with the resources whatever they will. Okay, that's enough on the little parenting advice segue. I'm not even a parent, so definitely take that with a grain of salt. So 
moving on from college i graduated college in 2021 go cats by the way any other northwestern grads and then i moved to chicago that's where i've been ever since i first lived in river north and now i live in wicker park if you don't know chicago that probably means nothing to you and i feel like i've never been in a better place with my celiac journey my gluten-free journey i feel like living in a big city and honestly it just being 2023 now and not 2011 there's so many more options when i go out to restaurants i would say probably like 75 percent of the restaurants i go out to have gluten-free marked on the menu which is so helpful i don't feel embarrassed to be gluten-free i tell everyone about it it's just not a big deal to me it's just part of who i am the one thing i will say is that i do kind of just feel a little awkward sometimes having to ask the waiter about if things are gluten-free or you know making a point especially if i'm at an event and not like a sit-down dinner because i go to a lot of influencer events in chicago and a lot of times they're serving food and a lot of times i'm hungry and i'm always asking like is this gluten-free and they're like oh i have to go back and check and it's just you know this whole ordeal but i mean at the end of the day it's it's not that big of a deal it's just one of those slight minor inconveniences that sometimes i'm just like i wish i could just snap my fingers and i would just automatically know if this was gluten-free or not like i hate having to go through the motions of asking and then they have to go ask the bag and talk to the chef and then this whole thing but at the end of the day like i said going back to being grateful it's not a big deal and I'm aware of that. It also is a little bit harder to cook for myself and find my own ingredients. So for example, gluten-free bread. If you have celiac, you know the drill. <laughs> it takes a long time to find a gluten-free bread that you like. I feel like I've tried all of them and there's a lot of bad ones out there. There's a lot of ones that just completely fall apart when you eat them. There's a lot of bad gluten-free breads. So for me, I found this one gluten-free bread that I like. It's called Carbonut. I I think they have it on Amazon because they sell it at Whole Foods, so I'll link it down below. That's my new favorite gluten-free bread as of the past month. So I have like all of these different grocery stores that have different gluten-free favorites. And when you live in a city and you're not able to drive to the grocery store, it can be, you know, a little tedious having to go through all the different spots. So every week I typically go to Whole Foods for my favorite gluten-free bread. And then sometimes I get some dairy-free stuff that I like because sometimes I like to eat dairy-free, but that has nothing to do with celiac disease. Then I go to Trader Joe's for the majority of my food because who doesn't love Trader Joe's? But they also have my favorite gluten-free bagels, the gluten-free everything bagels obsessed and then i like going to aldi too because they have cheaper just regular stuff like milk eggs carrots that sort of thing so it is a bit more work and there is a little bit more of a thought process into grocery shopping cooking in terms of having a kitchen i share a kitchen with my boyfriend i live with my boyfriend he is not gluten free so we have this special toaster that i'm actually obsessed with i'll link it down below too where it's a four slot toaster and i have one side and he has the other side so there's just little things like that that you just kind of have to think about when you're traveling obviously it's something to think about there's just like a little bit of extra work you have to do but honestly after 12 years i mean really more like five-ish years of doing it on my own it really just becomes a part of your routine and it's no problem the one thing though i will say that i still struggle with is cross-contamination cross-contamination i honestly i hate that word it just it honestly makes me angry so basically if you don't know it's basically when you go to a restaurant this commonly happens with french fries which is my favorite food to order when i'm at a restaurant because i just love french fries i mean who doesn't is when they cook items that technically would be gluten-free like french fries they're made from potatoes but they cook them in the same fryer as they're cooking other things that are not gluten-free so for example a really common thing is like a restaurant will serve french fries that are technically gluten-free but they're cooked in the same fryer as chicken strips that are breaded like gluten breaded and they cook them in the same fryer so they're like mixing with the oils it's they're not cleaning out the fryer in between so your fries are technically they don't have any gluten you know made into them in the ingredients but there's gluten all surrounding it like it is cross contaminated with gluten and on a technicality that is not safe for celiac people in full transparency for the longest time i was super naive to this i didn't understand why cross-contamination was such a big deal i was like cross-contamination doesn't matter for me like it's fine like i'm not eating a full loaf of bread like i'm gonna be fine but just doing more research i realized cross-contamination is actually bad for you if you have celiac disease and for the, the longest time i feel like i knew that deep down but i was just in denial about it i was just like i just want my fries like i don't care at this point it's honestly really hard for me to admit to everyone because it's just not a healthy way to live to just eat something even though you know it's bad for you and i think it just comes down to self-discipline honestly and i honestly feel like for a really long time i lacked a lot of self-discipline in my celiac disease and i think that can sometimes be one of the hardest things to overcome if you're trying to incorporate this gluten-free lifestyle and it wasn't in the form of you know i would straight up eat loaves of bread it would be i would be at a restaurant and they would tell me that 
the fries probably aren't celiac safe because they're cross-contaminated with the chicken in the fryer and I'd be like, no, it's fine. Like, it's fine with the fries. And I felt a lot of shame about that for the longest time, as I should, honestly, because I was just lying to myself and not being respectful of my body and what it needs. And really, taking care of myself is one of my number one priorities. Health is one of my number one priorities, but I was not putting that into action. So it was really something that took a lot of time for me to unpack and journal about and to develop the discipline and self-awareness that I needed to go to a restaurant and say no to the fries that are cross-contaminated because I know it's bad for me. And I know that might seem so obvious to you. Maybe that's not a struggle that you deal with, but for me, just being perfectly honest, that was something that I wasn't good at. And I kind of just had to really, really be honest with myself and not be too hard on myself, of course, but just be honest with myself and recognize that the behavior I was doing was not okay, not good for my body, and I needed to stop it. And it can be hard. It's kind of one of those things like you would never let your best friend eat those cross-contaminated fries if she had celiac, but you're just kind of like, oh, like I'm fine, like I'm invincible. Like that was kind of the mentality that I had, like, oh, like it'll be good. And I think honestly, as I've gotten older, it's helped me put into perspective really why I shouldn't have that behavior because I mean, when I was 11 and I was told oh you know celiac it can cause health complications further on in life the idea of me having cancer at 50 was just being like perfectly blunt was not on my radar i was i couldn't even imagine being 50 years old and now I'm, i mean i'm 23 i have a while till i'm 50 but i can imagine being 50 i know people that are 50 i i can imagine myself being 50 and i feel like i'm at a point now where i recognize that how I treat my body now is gonna affect my future health and I wanna take that really seriously. And I think it just took me time to understand that. So if you're younger than me and have that same mentality, I hope that you don't, but if you do, I would advise you just to try to develop that self-discipline now because then you'll just have that as a habit and it'll carry on and it won't be something that you'll have to really teach yourself once you become an adult. And your future self will be really happy that you did that. So yeah, that kind of goes with just currently I'm trying to relearn about celiac disease and how it affects me other than just not eating gluten. I still experience some symptoms. I have headaches, stomach issues. I mean, we've all been there. And sometimes it's hard to distinguish what is because of celiac and what is because I just didn't get enough sleep last night. Like it's just, it's one of those things that's really hard and you just kind of have to learn to listen to your own body and, and figure out the patterns that you've been used to for your entire life. Another thing I'm starting to do is schedule my annual checkup with a GI doctor gastrointestinal doctor which i haven't been doing for the past five years and it's just good to have those routine checkups get your blood work and just you know make sure everything is good a frustrating thing with that though is that in chicago i have louisiana insurance actually so it's hard to find providers that are in network so i really just have this one hospital that i can go to and literally i tried to schedule a gi appointment last september october and my appointment isn't until february the wait list to get an appointment was five months obviously it's better than nothing like i know i'm super grateful to even be able to go to the doctor but it's just one of those things where celiac doctors are not a dime a dozen especially with different insurance plans and all of that stuff so that's just something to keep in mind too yeah and it's definitely frustrating still dealing with symptoms i mean i suffer from acne i know that sometimes that can be a trigger from celiac disease but again everyone's body is so different so whenever i'm frustrated with any symptoms like that i just try to focus on what i can control what i'm putting into my body trying to eat gluten-free as best as i can and just knowing that i mean it's easier said than done but i just really try to assure myself that i can only control what i can control there's there's no use of me worrying about what I can't control. So yeah, that's a little overview of my journey with celiac disease so far. It's definitely ongoing. I'm a work in progress and I'm trying to learn more and more about my body every day, practice intuitive eating, intuitive working out, and just listening to my body, especially as I enter womanhood. It's definitely been quite the journey, but at the end of the day, I'm just grateful to be here, grateful to have figured out what was going wrong with me when I was 11 and super sick, and that's my journey. I hope this was helpful to you again. Please comment down below if you also have celiac disease. I post a lot of vlogs about my life in Chicago, and I'm always giving little gluten-free tips and recipes here and there, so subscribe if you want to hang out with me more. I post a new video every Sunday and Wednesday, and if you enjoyed this video or it was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!